Natasha. Debbie. Show. The show. <laughs> Welcome to it. <laughs> Just two patriotic girls. Learning about the world. So please, don't take us the wrong way. Hey everybody, welcome to the show. Hello. Which is Debbie, if you didn't notice by, by my pointing. No, it's the entire show. <laughs> um, today we're going to do a topic that has been requested. Hundreds of times. Probably. Yes. <laughs> um, and we're going to get into that in just a moment, but stupid YouTube formalities. That's right. <laughs> Please hit the like button if you like today's episode and consider subscribing to our channel. But before you subscribe... Please check out some of our other content to make sure you want to be a part of our family. Get to know who we are. That's right. And if you don't, one important fact that we want to give to you today, if you don't know anything about us, um, we are proud Americans. Very much so. Proud of our military, but we're also very proud of all of our allied military. That's right. And, and it's you. That's correct. Um, my dad was um, United States Marine Corps. My grandpa was in World War II. He was United States Navy. Mm -hmm. I have uncles that were in the military and my, uh, gosh, uh, great uncles. And I, I can go back in my family to our civil war here in America, Union yeah. side. Thank God. <laughs> and my dad was Air Force and my stepdad was Army. Military police served in Korea, which made it very interesting to be sneaking in the house late <laughs> past curfew. <laughs> he was a great guy. <laughs> Before we get into this video which, it, by the way, is called Why the Uncompromising Anzacs of World War II Gave Their Enemies Generals Headaches. Mm. I love the title of this video. Yeah. We have noticed it's a short video. Um, and it's probably going to be a lot left to be, a lot left to be desired. Of course. So I could tell by the length of it. I mean, no video is going to cover as much as we want them to about any subject. Especially military. We always yeah. want to know as much as we can, but we know it's just going to be touch here, touch here, touch here, touch mm -hmm. here. But here's the cool thing, too, though. Um, Debbie and I aren't, um, you know, we're not dim when it comes to military. Uh, we know a little mm -hmm. bit about a little bit of everything. A little bit. A little bit about a little bit. A little bit. Um, and so we do know a little tiny bit about the Anzacs. Mm -hmm. And that is, again, they were formed. I know they were formed in a World, War. World War I. That's right. hard to say. Um, yeah. And then I think they were disbanded, but then put back together, I think. I remember that. Yes. I think that's true. And then I think, tell me if I'm wrong in the comments on this one, was it not New Zealand that was one of the first countries in combat? Mm -hmm. I feel like that was. Um, I might be wrong on that one. But we know a little bit. So yeah, there was a different video sent to us originally, but it was kind of like the beginning. And I'm like, okay, we yeah. kind of know some of that. Um, yeah. Not a lot, but this one, um, you know, it says it's going to give us a little bit about an overview mm -hmm. um, of both countries, New Zealand, of course, and Australia and World War II. But again, I think it's probably going to be a drop in the bucket because, again, of the time. So if you want us to do more on this topic, please let us know. Um, but we're going to learn some stuff here that we probably don't have a clue on. So let's dive into this video. And uh, whew, I think it, it could be interesting and also maybe a little bit tough to watch. We'll see. It's a running joke that Australia and New Zealand don't actually exist. However, we can assure you that this isn't the case. While Tasmania may be fictional, Australia and New Zealand are far from it. And these. Hold on. First of all, love Tasmania. Mm -hmm. Secondly, I just think that's not very funny considering the topic. And I'm sure there are plenty of people in Tasmania, um, soldiers that are part of the Anzacs or mm -hmm. were. Um, so True. just want to say that. I just don't like that. Sometimes jokes are just not right in certain places. And when it comes to things like this, I don't find that funny. These two allied nations fought with bravery and distinction in the Second World War. In this episode of The Front, we're going to talk a little about the Anzac Corps and then provide you with an overview of Australia and New Zealand in World War II. Firstly, let's distinguish the Australian and New Zealand Army Corps, or just Anzac Corps, from the Australian Army and New Zealand Army. As the title implies, the Anzac Corps was a military unit comprised of Aussies and Kiwis. It was created in the First World War during the Gallipoli Campaign, awesome. though it was disbanded in 1916. Mm -hmm. The Corps was briefly remade in World War II during the Battle of Greece and so too in the Vietnam War and the East Timor Crisis. The term Anzac, however, is used a little differently in Australia and New Zealand. Okay. When Aussies and Kiwis first commemorated the wartime sacrifices of their fathers, sons, husbands and brothers on the 25th of April 1916, that day was deemed Anzac Day. 
Okay. Though nice. every Anzac Day since commemorates not only the sacrifice of those who fought in the First World War, but the sacrifice of all Australian and New Zealand military personnel in all subsequent conflicts. And um, <coughs> I just want to take a moment to Sorry. say thank you to anyone active or veteran serving. Yes, um, thank you so much. Here in America, we say thank you to our servicemen, whether they're active or veterans. Yeah, and we mean that with the biggest respect possible. Yes. Uh, we've gotten mocked in the past for saying mm -hmm. that, and uh, I don't think people outside of our country understand what that really means and how genuine it really is. Yes. And how much our military appreciates that. Yes, they but do. But we do mean that with all sincerity. Um, mm -hmm. Question really quickly, glad you paused right there. Do you also have Remembrance Day? We have Veterans Day here. Our Veterans Day used to be called Remembrance Day right. like long, long time yeah. ago. <laughs> um, but is that separate from Anzac Day, which I know is coming up? Mm -hmm. um, don't know. So just let us know that. Right. I feel like it's probably separate, but I don't know. So. Yeah, let us know. Yeah. Got that. Thank you. Australian and New Zealand military personnel in all subsequent conflicts. In Australia, at least, we attend a dawn service and hold a minute's silence for the dead. We also wear okay. blood red poppies, the same that bloomed on the raised battlefields of Europe in the Great War. I think that's an international so thing. We well, know that the Anzac Corps countries. briefly served yeah. as a distinct unit in World War II, okay. but what else did the Aussies and New Zealanders get up to in the most devastating event in human history? Question. First, let's take a look at the Aussies. A British Commonwealth nation, the land down under followed Britain into war against Nazi Germany on the 3rd of September 1939, and against Germany's allies later on. The Australian Army- Sorry, that is- Aww, a puppy. That just reminded me of something too. I, you know, another thing I remember about um, the Anzacs, at least Australia specifically, was mm -hmm. um, they, were, um, they weren't they were drafted in World War I. Yeah. Yeah. Right? I think that's correct. Um, sorry for the train back there. It's annoying. But I believe they weren't, and um, a good portion of them were just volunteers, which mm -hmm. is, like, absolutely awesome and crazy and absolutely. awesome. It's just the coolest thing ever. Um, but I just want to throw, throw that out there for some reason. Something he said made me think about that. And against Germany's poster? allies later on. The Australian Army, Royal Australian Air Force, and Royal Australian Navy fought in many theatres of war, though their contributions in Western Europe, the Mediterranean, and North Africa, and the Pacific are perhaps their most renowned. Some 13,000 Aussie pilots and air crew served in British and Australian air units in the defense of Britain and over Western Europe. Awesome. In terms of percentage, these men sustained yeah. the highest casualty rates of all branches of the Australian military, 20%, with just shy of 3,500 Aussie pilots and airmen paying the ultimate Dang. price. Air Force and Navy units also supported the June 1944 D-Day landings, helping the Allies gain a foothold in Normandy. Some of these squadrons went on to support the Western Allies' occupation of Germany in the final days of war in Europe. Royal Australian Navy warships clashed with Italian vessels in the Mediterranean in 1940, and Australian ground forces made their mark in December that year in the Allied Operation Compass, part of the North African campaign. The Aussies fought with utmost bravery in this operation, notably when the 6th Australian Infantry Division assaulted the Italian-held Libyan fortress of Bardia. In this battle, the Aussies, bolstered by the Brits, ultimately took some 36,000 Italian prisoners oh, and crap. inflicted an additional 4,500 casualties. They also managed to capture some 800 Italian vehicles and 400 Italian artillery guns. <laughs> Epic! How's that make yeah. you feel there, Italian girl? Well... If you don't know, Debbie's got a high percentage of <laughs> Italian ancestry in her. It was your great grandparents, wasn't it, that came over here? Yes, it was. Fresh off the boat? Yes, it was. So how do you feel about that? Well, you know, <laughs> everyone's got something in their in their lineage. I don't. <laughs> I got nothing. We don't know. I'm just joking. <laughs> no, I just that's that's epic. That's that's yeah, uh, that's I mean, impressive. I wow. see. These are the things I was hoping to learn, and um, we are like stuff outside of the things we already kind of had a little bit of information mm -hmm. on, like what else they were doing, you know. Exactly. Um, and that's really impressive. I had that no is. idea. Um, they capture a lot. I know that's impressive. That's um, the cowboy hats. I'm calling those. Cow I know they're not cowboy hats. I apologize. Yes. I don't know the correct terminology. Yeah, I, love the, I love the uniforms. <laughs> 
You can't help it. I'm just impressed. Like that, I want to hear these numbers again because that's just that's insanity. <laughs> some some high numbers. Uh huh. Woo. In this battle, the Aussies bolstered by the Brits, ultimately took some 36,000 Italian prisoners and inflicted an additional 4,500 casualties. They also managed to capture some 800 Italian vehicles and Jeez. 400 Italian artillery guns. That's a lot. Conversely, only some 450 Allied personnel became casualties of this battle. Huh. The Aussies fought a different war in the Pacific, staving off the brutal Japanese right on Australia's doorstep. In the battles of Malaya and Singapore, thousands of Aussies were captured by the Imperial Japanese troops, with 15,000 falling into enemy hands wow. in Singapore alone. Further losses were endured in the New Guinea campaign, which went all the way from January 1942 to just about the end of the war, and mm. Aussies fought and died in the bloodthirsty 1945 Borneo campaign too. A conflict famed for its savage guerrilla warfare, in which Special Operations <clears throat> Australia or SOA, played a crucial role. Australia herself tasted Japanese ruthlessness, most notably in the February 1942 bombing of Darwin, the Northern Territory's capital. So I'm just going to pause there just for a second because, I mean, um, you know, again, our allied nations are amazing and we're, we're awesome. We're awesome. You yeah, know, if awesome. we all hadn't joined together, this would have been a whole different mm -hmm. time. I don't know what we'd all be doing right now. Exactly. Man, just look at that picture right there. That's a warrior. That's a warrior. Notably in the February 1942 bombing of Darwin, the Northern Territory's capital. This was the first of some 100 Japanese air raids exacted on Australia throughout Dang. the war. And the some bombing 100? of Darwin remains the largest attack on Australia in all the island nations. Yeah, history. see? Wow, no. Defences were carried out primarily by the Royal Australian Navy and Royal Australian Air Force, though the Yanks were there to lend a helping hand too. I'm glad. So, seeing as Australia was bombed by the Japanese, it must be real. But what about New Zealand? What did they get up to in the war? Well, as for the Kiwis, they also followed Britain into war against Germany on the 3rd of September 1939, mm -hmm. and like the Aussies, mm -hmm. fought in many different theatres, in many cases alongside their Australian comrades. New Zealand's principal overseas force was the 2nd New Zealand Expeditionary Force, or 2NZEF. While its air force was the Royal New Zealand Air Force and its navy was the Royal New Zealand Navy. New Zealand's contributions to the Allied war effort in Europe were primarily through its air force, whose pilots and airmen served in Kiwi units under the RAF or directly in RAF okay. squadrons. Like the Aussies, they fought for the Queen in the Battle of Britain. Generally, serving directly in the RAF, Kiwi pilots went wherever the RAF went and bombed whatever the RAF bombed. <laughs> Men of the 2NZEF fought hard in the bloody Battle of Monte Cassino in March 1944 too, playing a crucial role in what would ultimately lead to the Allied capture of the town and castle. New Zealand artillery units, in particular, paved the way for the Polish and British offensive which gained the Allies the town. That's huge! The Maldi Battalion. That's huge! Why 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 did I not know that part? I don't know why. why? That's that's huge. Kiwis. <laughs> Epic. That that's huge. The Polish and British offensive which gained the Allies the town. The Maldi Battalion was also present here under the second New Zealand division. By the bullets of a stubborn German defense, the battalion I'm sorry, but <laughs> I looked up and saw that and I was on the, the German side. I'd be like, I have, nope. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we go. <don't. laughs> exactly. That's just terrifying, <laughs> but epically cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sorry, I keep doing that. I wonder why I'm back so I don't miss anything. Zealand Division. By the bullets of a stubborn German defense, the battalion suffered devastating losses with 128 out of the 200 Maldi soldiers in it oh, becoming dang. casualties of war. That's dang. a whopping 64% of the yeah. unit. Wow. Like the Australians, the New Zealanders feared a Japanese invasion, so they fought mm -hmm. hard against Imperial Japan in the Pacific. While New Zealand did have some violent encounters with Axis naval vessels in its own waters, the country did not feel the heat of Japanese bombs, Good. and an invasion never came to pass. Good. With Kiwi okay, pilots yes. fighting under the British RAF in other theatres, the Americans supported the Air Force in the Pacific by lending them planes and whatnot. To put New Zealand's contributions into perspective, it suffered, proportionately, more casualties than any other Commonwealth nation involved uh -huh. in the Second World War. 
12,000 of New Zealand's 1940 population of 1.6 million lost their lives in the conflict. Wow. If anyone's watching and that was any of your family members, we seriously, mm. like, I, I, I'm i sorry. Yes. I'm just sorry. That's horrible. Any number is too many. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Ugh. God. New Zealand's 1940 population of 1.6 million lost their That's lives in the conflict. It's not a huge population. Now, we did say earlier that the Anzac Corps was remade in the Battle of Greece, so let's take a look at that a okay. little bit further. In March 1941, the Australia 1st Corps, with the New Zealand 2nd Division under it, landed in Greece to defend the nation against a German invasion. It was soon after this that the combined Aussie Kiwi unit was officially renamed the Anzac Corps, okay. though this title was short lived. The German invasion, unlike the Italian invasion before it, was hugely successful, and the Anzac Corps, along with the Greeks and Brits, was mostly undone. Mm. Instead of fleeing Greece entirely, however, some Anzac remnants remained on the Greek island of Crete and put up a stubborn defence alongside Cretan military personnel and civilians. These and? were primarily the Australian 6th Division's 19th Brigade and some Kiwi units, including yeah. the aforementioned Maori Battalion, which took part in a series of savage engagements throughout the island. In more than one instance, the battalion carried out bayonet charges, stabbing and bludgeoning hundreds of Germans to death. Oh. In Could you imagine? Oh, that's warriors again. Oh, I'm not surprised! Yeah. I'm actually not surprised. I'm not surprised either. Wow. I mean, Impressed. Yeah. Running at you with some bayonets and be like, seeing them running yeah, at you again. Good. No, that's yeah, <laughs> some hardcore. Mm -hmm. Dang, man. Carried out bayonet charges, stabbing and bludgeoning hundreds of Germans to death. Hundreds. In the latter half of 1941, many Australian units left the Mediterranean and North Africa to contest the Japanese in the Pacific. Huh. Some Aussie units, such as the Australian 1st Corps' 9th Division, remained. These men didn't have it easy, especially in the Libyan port city of Tobruk, which came under siege by the Axis and was largely defended by Australian troops. Okay. But the Kiwis were done licking their wounds after the Battle of Greece and, alongside other allied nations, came to their Aussie brothers' aid on the 18th of November 1941 in Operation Crusader. Okay. Here, they clashed with Rommel's Africa Corps and ultimately sent the German general running. <laughs> the Australian 9th and New Zealand 2nd Division fought and sustained heavy casualties together in the 1st and 2nd Battles of El Alamein II. Uh. Obviously, the contributions of Australia and New Zealand to the Allied victory in World War II extended far beyond what we've covered today. Oh yeah. Uh. There were also many other battles in which Aussies and Kiwis fought and died side by side. Far too many for one video. Okay. For okay. now, we hope we've provided you with a decent overview of these two fighting nations. I would say they did. They did provide a decent overview uh, of the, the nation. Yeah. As far as what an I, overview. you know, the little bit I already knew coming in, mm -hmm. I think you, we both think yeah. much the same stuff. Um, but, uh, you know, thinking, of course, I would like to do more videos on this topic. Let us know in the comments if you'd like that as well. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, man, I just, um, oh. It's so cool to see Australia and New Zealand coming together. I mean, I know you guys kind of give each other some <sighs> sh sometimes. Sorry for the words. <laughs> but it seems like you all are like, you know, like a big brother, little brother. And you just, you, you look after each other, but you pick on each other. It's kind of like but England, in the end, England and Wales, right? Yeah. And it's yeah. like, in the end, don't nobody pick on either one. Yeah. Because they're going to join forces and come after you. I've learned that in the comments, too. I've, yeah. played, I've paid attention to some of you guys giving each other crap, and then it's just like, nah, don't really mean it. Yeah. And I think America and, and the UK do that, too. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't know we do. We do. I don't know if anyone in the UK will. Um, but <laughs> I think all the allies do, in a, in a way. But yeah, I think, of course, yeah. because of the closeness of Australia geographically to New Zealand, to New Zealand yeah. it is like Big Brother... Uh, or, you just, or not even little brother, just the siblings in general. Exactly. Um, you know, I think it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's what it is, what it is. But um, I have the deepest respect for both the Australian um, military again and, and the New Zealand military. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> again, there's just, there's just no way that World War II would ever have been won had everyone not joined together that day. Yeah. It just wouldn't have happened. Um, Hmm. I mean, the, the countries that did join together had to join together to get the outcome that Absolutely. we ended up with. And then just hearing the amount of casualties that were lost. And, and it's huge. It's insane. That's insane. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really upsetting, you know. Uh, 
you always every time we look into World War II stuff, we always find something new mm-hmm. that we're like it, it's usually really hardcore. You know, it's like a really hardcore moments of yeah, tag on it, man. You know, our sincerest respect and love and 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 genuine everything um, to all of our um, allies out there. Mm-hmm. Um, Canadian allies, Australian allies, the New Zealand allies, uh, the British allies. Just thank you guys so mm-hmm. much for, again for your service. Thank you for your love. Um, you know, it just means everything. You know, it, the military just never gets enough love. No, never. I don't think they do. Um, if you guys like today's video, please click the like button. Click the like button. What? <laughs> <laughs> click the Smash bucket. Smash the like button. We'll go with that one. Hit the like button. And uh, consider subscribing to the channel. Again, I'd like to do more videos. Um, this was a short one, mm-hmm. but I still liked it, though. I thought it, it gave some good information to things I, again, had no idea about. Um, there's a lot that could be probably oh, covered. there's got to be a ton. Yeah, I'm sure there is. Like, yeah. I'm sure there's probably a ton so of videos. let us know if you want us to do more videos. Yeah. We'll see you guys on the next episode. Thank you so much again. Uh, until then, please, love like jazz. Be as strong as Tyson. Bye, guys. Bye.